Good morning, boys and girls. It is Thursday, May 20th. Today we are going to be going over some math. Uh, before I forget, I just want to make a quick reminder that tomorrow, Friday the 21st, we are going to be doing some reading in our small reading groups. So if uh, you don't know what time you should be in class, class times are going to be a little bit different tomorrow. Uh, so if you don't know what time you should be in class, please just check the class dojo. This will tell you exactly when you should come to class. Okay. All right. Now, moving on to this math, uh, we are going to be doing some more word problems. These all involve decimals. Um, this is the second part. This is lesson two. So you better believe that it's a bit more difficult than lesson one. So now we have multiple step word problems. So try not to get confused. Just follow along as best you can. All right. So here we have Larry. Larry had $12.45. Farida had $3.50 more than Larry. Explain how to find how much Larry and Farida had all together. Okay. So um, all together. This tells me I need to add stuff. Uh, however, I can't just add twelve forty-five and three dollars fifty cents. Can't do that. Um, I need to. Let's see what happened to all my stuff here. Here we go. All right. Um, I can't just add these together and come up with an answer because that will be wrong. Let's look exactly what we're doing here. Larry had $12.45. Farida had $3.50 more than Larry. So first, let's check out how much Larry has, okay? We know how much, um, I'm sorry, let's find how much Farida has. We know how much Larry has. Farida has $3.50 more than he does. So what should we do there? Well, we can do 12.45 plus 3.5 or 3.50, all right? Because this guy's got $12.45, he's got $3.50 more than that. All right, so first, I'm just gonna add these up here. Don't forget your decimal point. All right, now I have $15.95. What did I just solve? Did I solve my question? My question says, how much do Larry and Farida have all together? Did I solve that? No, I did not. I just solved how much Farida has, okay? Um, so now, again, I know how much Larry has. He's got $12.45. And now I know that Farida has $15.95. So I'm going to add this once more. All right, $15.95, that's how much Farida has. And $12.45, that's how much Larry has. We want to know how much they have all together. All right, and we would just add these up. Okay, now I'm finished. All right, so we're going to be doing a bunch of problems like that. Don't worry, um, I'm sure you kids can all add this together and we can work on that in class. However, let's learn a couple of different tricks, okay? Because uh, we need to pay attention to all these words here. Number one, Jamie stacked seven similar mathematics textbooks. The height of the stack was 5.95 centimeters. All right, um, question A, what was the thickness of each textbook? What was the height of a stack of nine such books? Oh man, they are trying to confuse you already. All right, let's take this step by step. First, let's just read our problem here. Jamie stacked seven similar, okay? I underline the word similar. This tells me all these math books are the same, okay? So we can just say that, we've got seven of the same thing, all right? And 
the height of the stack, meaning all seven together, is 5.95 centimeters. All right. So this tells me they are giving you the total. Um, and then let's just look at question A here. What is the thickness of each book? Once again, anytime you see each, we're just talking about one. So if we know the total and we know how much we have, we have seven, how would we figure this out? Well, I think we can probably divide, all right? Um, but let's just check out really quickly our steps here. Please pay attention uh, because these problems are not easy. Step number one, what have I gathered from the problem? All right. Once again, you need to just look at the problem just like I did and check out all the information. OK, I know there's seven books. I know that the height of all these books is 5.95 centimeters. I know that all these books are the same. OK, so they're giving you the total and one piece of the puzzle there. Step two, how do I solve it? I can draw a model. Please draw yourself a picture, okay? This really will help you visualize exactly what you need to do, all right? And they've already got some pictures down here for you. So let's not worry too much about drawing on the computer because I know my drawings are not the best. Step three, what do I need to find, all right? This is just telling you that you need to reread the question. Okay, because some of us like to stop on uh, part one of the problem and you are not actually answering the question. So here's question number one or question A, what is the thickness of each book? Okay, so what do I need to find? I need to find the thickness of each book. And question B, what is the height of nine such textbook? All right, then I need to find the height of nine such textbook. We're not gonna worry about that right now. Let's just check out what this kid says. How many books were in a stack? How tall was each stack? All right, so let's look at our uh, diagrams or models that we made here. All right, A, so we know the total. Once again, we know the total, it is 5.95 centimeters. And we're trying to figure out what one of these things is. So what should we do? Well, we've got seven books. We should divide 5.95 by seven, all right? Then you will get 0 0.85. The thickness of each textbook was 0 0.85 centimeters, all right? This will tell us uh, how to solve part B here, okay? Because in part B, we want to find the height of nine books. How are we gonna do that? Well, if we know the height of one book, one book is 0 0.85 centimeters. Nine books, we can just multiply this by nine, which is what they're doing here, all right? And you will end up with 7.65 centimeters. All right, and then as always, it is important to check your answers, okay? Because we all make mistakes. So, um, if you work backwards, you should be able to check your work, okay? For example here, um, if 5.95 divided by seven equals 0 0.85, then 0 0.85 times seven should equal 5.95, okay? Same thing here, if you are multiplying here, then we also should divide, okay? Uh, six point, uh, I'm sorry, 7.65 divided by nine should equal 0 0.85, all right? Just make sure that your answers are reasonable and make sure they make sense. Number two, Sophie bought five bangles at $4.75 each. She gave the cashier $30. How much change did she receive? Now, this is actually a wonderful problem for practicing real world situations, okay? I always run into uh, this situation when I'm out buying food or out buying clothes or whatever you're buying, okay? 
okay? Know how much change you're going to get from the person because sometimes people make mistakes because they are busy at work and they're not paying attention. Other times, people are just trying to uh, take your money. So make sure you know how much change you're supposed to get when you give people money. Don't just expect that they will give you the correct change. All right. Sophie bought five bangles. All right. So we know how many she bought. We know that one costs $4.75. Then she gives the cashier $30. How much change does she get? All right. So uh, once again, we're going to use this four-step problem-solving method to help you then work backwards to check if your answer is reasonable. So they have, I've already pulled out our information and then they drew you this wonderful model here. All right. We know that one of these bangles, the bracelets cost $4.75. And we know that there are five of them. So one, two, three, four, five. We can multiply this number by five, which is what they did down here. This will give us the total amount we spent on the bangles. And then what should we do? Well, we know she gave them $30, all right? And there's all this extra change. This right here with this wonderful question mark is your change. All right, so 30 minus the total will equal the change. $30 minus the total should equal $6.25. And that is what she should receive. Then once again, make sure you check your answers, okay? Does 23.75 plus 6.25 equal $30 exactly? If not, you made a mistake. Okay, same thing here. Does $23.75 divided by five equal $4.75? If not, we made a mistake, okay? Problem three, the mass of a bag of red beans was 1.2 kg. The mass of a bag of kidney beans was 0 0.85 kg. What was the total mass of four such bags of red beans and one bag of kidney beans? All right, so we got a bunch of beans here. Um, they give you the mass or the weight of one bag of red beans. And we know how much a bag of kidney beans is, all right? Now we wanna know the total mass of four four bags of red beans and one bag of kidney beans. All right, so they're trying to make you do more than one thing here in this problem. Um, we know that 1.2 uh, equals one bag of red beans here, which they have this wonderful picture here for you. We wanna know how much four bags are. So my first step is probably gonna be to multiply uh, 1.2 times four, this will give me this amount here. And then I'm going to add it with um, my other bag of kidney beans. We know already how much one bag of kidney beans is. It is 0 0.85. So then we just add those together. And we should end up with 5.65 kilograms, all right? Um, also, just make sure that we get our math correctly. Once again, if 1.2 times 4 equals 4.8, then 4.8 divided by 4 equals 1.2. And if you know your 12 multiplication tables, then this should look familiar, okay? 12 times 4 is 48. 1.2 times 4 is 4.8. There's just a decimal point in there. All right. And also we can subtract here as well, okay? 5.65 minus 4.8 should equal 0 0.85. Just make sure you check your work, kids. All right, um, I'm going to skip this for now and let's actually do some math problems, all right? Number one, June made 18.4 liters of lemonade for a party. Her guests drank 11.38 liters of lemonade. 
she poured the remaining lemonade equally into three containers. All right, so I was just going through and underlining all those things that I think I need to uh, deal with. That's step one. Step two, draw a model, which they've already done for you. So let's fill that out first, okay? And actually, let's read through these questions before we do that. How much lemonade did she have left after the party? And B, how much lemonade did each container contain? Well, we are going to try to solve for A first because that should be, that will help us solve part B. All right, so how much lemonade did she have left after the party? Let's check out what we know. We know at the beginning of the party, she started with 18.4 liters. That is our total. So we can't get more than 18.4. This whole thing down here should be 18.4. All right, then we know that her thirsty friends there drank 11.38. liters. So what should we do? We don't know what this extra thing is here. So we know the total. We know 11.38. I think we should subtract because if her guests are drinking this, she will never see it again here. Whoopsie, 18.4. I'm going to put a zero in here. That way I don't confuse myself. All right, why did your teacher put the zero in there? Because I just want to make sure I don't confuse myself when I'm dealing with these hundreds. Once again, when you line these up, make sure the decimal points are in the same place. That way, all your numbers are in the same place also. Okay, I've got my tenths. I've got my hundredths. All right, so uh, let's see. Let's do some math, shall we? I'm going to borrow one tenth and make it into ten hundredths here. Ten minus eight is two. Three minus three is zero. Make sure you put your decimal point down. Eight minus one is seven. And one minus one is zero. Okay. So um, how much does she have left after the party? She has 7.02 liters. All right, and um, this part here, sorry, I know this is kind of messy and we can't see it all at the same time on the screen. This is where we need to put this subtraction problem, okay? That goes right in there. And then you will mark your answer. She had 7.02 liters of lemonade left after the party. All right, so, now I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to try and solve part B here. All right. How much lemonade did each container contain? All right. We know that she has three containers. We know that she poured them equally, meaning they're all the same here. Okay. So let's look at part B here. All right. Part B. Um, how much does this equal? Well, we know how much she had left after the party. She's got 7.02 liters, all right? Um, we want to know how much each, well, let me go read this again just to make sure. How much lemonade did each, meaning one container, contain, all right? So I know how much three is. I want to know how much one is. What should I do? Well, I'm going to divide by three. All right, 7.02 divided by three. All right, do not forget your decimal point when you're dealing with this division, all right? Also, we can put divided by right here, that's what they want, and we're gonna solve this right now, okay? Three fits into seven, two times, Three times two is six. Seven minus six is one. Bring down your next number. And also don't worry about the decimal point. Just pretend that it's not there. 
Okay, as long as it's in your answer column, that is fine, or in your answer row up top. So then I have three. Hold on. All right, kids. So we've got uh, three goes into 10 three times. Three times three is nine. 10 minus nine is one. Bring down your next number, which is a two here. Three goes into 12 four times. And now we have three times four is 12. This will end up as zero down here at the bottom. So we are finished, okay? Our answer here should be 2.34, okay? Each container contained 2.34 liters. All right, and as always, make sure you check your work, okay? Let me just do that really quickly, okay? So 2.34 times three should equal 7.02. Four times three is 12. Three times three is nine plus one is 10. Oh, we seem to be on the right track. And three times two is six plus one. Hey, it equals seven. I think we did a good job. All right. Next, number two, kit saved $12.15. Carl saved three times as much as kit. Mia saved, oh, we're adding another person here. Mia saved 24.50. I'm sorry, $24.50 less than Carl. How much money did Mia save? All right, so this is a multi-step problem and they are giving you three people, which makes it difficult to work it out in your head. So please, 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 uh, when you see this or this kind of problem in your workbook, um, please draw a picture. Make it look nice and neat like this. It will really help you plan everything out here. So let's take this information that we know, okay? Uh, we know we have three people, Kit. All right, and we know exactly how much Kit has. She has $12.15. Let's write that down. That seems to be good info. All right, and then what else do we know here? I also know that Carl saved three times as much as Kit, okay? Three times. Hey, maybe that means we should multiply by three. All right, so I know that Carl has three times as much as Kit. And oh, I'm sorry, let's put that in here, okay? 12, 15 times three, all right. And we wanna know how much Carl saved here. I'm gonna add something here and then let's do some math, shall we? $12.15 times three. All right, five times three is 15. Three times one is three plus one. Please do not forget your decimal point. Two times three is six. And one times three is three. All right, so it appears that our friend Carl here saved $36.45. All right, so now I've figured out the first part of the problem. And let's continue here, whoopsie. All right, what else do we know? We haven't even gotten to sentence three here. It says Mia saved $24.50 less than Carl. And then our final question here is how much money did Mia save? So 
I just solved for Carl. That means I can just do a subtraction problem here. Mia saved $24.50 less than Carl. And, oh, I see what they did here. This, okay. This picture's a little bit confusing, but that's okay. All right, we know that. We know how much Carl saved. He's got 36 bucks and 45 cents. And we know that Mia saved $24 and 50 cents less than he did. So that's why I'm subtracting. All right. And I'm gonna put this vertically up and down 36.45 and 24.50. And now I'm gonna subtract here, okay? Five minus zero is five. Here I'm gonna have to do some borrowing. I'm gonna borrow a one and turn it into 10 tenths. 14 minus five is nine. Five minus four is one. Don't forget your decimal point. All right, and this is what we should end up with, I hope. All right, and this number goes down here as well. And this number here, 36.45 should be down here, I think. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, I see. This is, this is why I'm getting confused. This is $24.50. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so this is 2450. We wanna know what this question mark is, which we just solved for. It is 11.95 or $11.95, okay? All right, that is our problem. Uh, let's go back and make sure. Um, we have, if everything works out correctly, $11.95. plus $24.50, it should equal $36.45. And Oops, I'm confusing myself. I forgot my decimal point. All right, this is 6.30. All right, I think we're in the clear, boys and girls. If you have not written all that stuff down, just rewind the video. Number three. All right, this is our last problem here. Nathan jogged 4.55 kilometers. On Monday, he jogged 1.78 kilometers more on Tuesday than on Monday. What was the distance he jogged on both days, meaning the two days here, okay? So uh, this is, once again, this is a multi-step problem. Let's start with what we know. Also, please make sure you draw a picture, draw yourself a model, all right? It will help you because this is not easy to work out in your head. Let's start with what we know. On Monday, we know he jogged four. Oh man, what is wrong here? There we go, 4.55 kilometers. Um, and we don't know how much he jogged on Tuesday, but we know that he jogged 1.78 more on Tuesday. That seems like an easy math problem, okay? So that's going to be our first step here. We cannot solve what the distance he jogged on both days quite yet because we don't know how much uh, he jogged on Tuesday, all right? So let's solve for that right now. It's going to be uh, 4.55 plus, 
uh, 1.78. All right, and that's what we're going to put in there. Sorry, this is a little bit off here. 4.55 plus 1.78. And actually, I can't really see this. Sorry, your teacher's got bad eyes. Let's put this over here. And let's start adding five and eight is 13. Carry the one, we should get 13 again. All right, so now I know how much he jogged on Tuesday, okay? He jogged 6.33 kilometers on Tuesday. Am I finished? No, I am not. We wanna know the distance he jogged on both days, but now, we know how much he did on Monday. He jogged 4.55 kilometers. We know how much he did on Tuesday. He did 6.33. So what should I do? I think I'll just add these together and come up with a nice big number. So once again, 6.33 is our number from Tuesday and 4.55 is our number from Monday. We want to know how much he jogged on both days. Let's add them together. Three and five is eight. Three and five is eight again. Six and four is 10. Don't forget your decimal point. We should end up with 10.88 kilometers, kilometers. All right, so um, this is what we should have here in part two, although mine's a bit messy because I'm on the computer, okay? Um, don't worry about this too much. We are going to work this out in class today at 1030 and 1 p.m. And we will go through this and all these wonderful workbook pages here. This might be confusing. If you have any questions about what you should do, please message me on Class Dojo. All right. Or you can send it to my Gmail account, too. Um, that's all for now. Or you can just call the school also, that works. But please make sure you ask questions if you have them because I cannot read your mind, kids. All right, that's all for now, kids. I'll see you in class later.